Hey guys, Raja Mizan here. In this video, I will show you how to finalize your uh, financial analysis using ratio analysis for your coursework. Uh, how to get even better marks in your coursework. This video is a sequel of my previous video, seven features of, um, uh, of a comprehensive financial uh, analysis. And if you include all of those seven features, there are very good chances that you would get a distinction. You would touch 70% marks. But there could be uh, two reasons this video is needed. If you include all of those seven features in your ratio analysis, the number of word count is going to be more than what is allowed. And that is a good thing. It's not necessarily a, a, a bad thing. And I will explain why. The second thing is um, that some of you would like to even get higher marks. 70% may not be good enough for you. You want to get 80% and maybe you should try to get 100%. But I haven't given anybody 100% in, in a ratio analysis, but I have given 86% uh, marks uh, to a student which had a really good work. So maybe that could be your target. This video is useful if you have word count more than what you needed or if you want higher than 70% marks in your coursework. So the first point is our, our higher word count. And definitely, um, if you follow those seven features, for your ratio analysis, you are going to get uh, more word count than, than you have. There are some easy fixes uh, in this case, and there are some not so easy fixes. You should take away first feature of your um, ratio analysis, which was formula and the definition of the ratio out of the main body of the work. Remember that the, when we do word count, we only take into account what is in the main body of the work. Appendix is not included in the word count. If you give a separate appendix for uh, formulas of the ratios and then another for another uh, appendix on the definition of the ratios, you are not going to lose any marks. But this should only be done if you are over word count. It should not be done if you uh, if you if you still within uh, the word count. So that would remove quite a lot of your word count up to 200 word count. You can lose simply by taking away first feature. Uh, which is formula and the definition of the ratio out of the main body of the work. Uh, the second way to do would be to pasting tables as a picture. Now this is a trick, this is actually a bit of cheating, but it's allowed as long as Microsoft Word is not counting it as Word. If you're still struggling with the, the word count, then you need, to, you need to think a bit more creatively to reduce the word count. The first thing which you can do is read through your work again and see uh, if uh, you can write the same things in fewer words. It is always possible. It's all about practice. However, one thing which can help you massively and it is very, very effective is changing the structure of, of the work. And I will explain this by showing you uh, two different pieces of work which have been submitted to me and they both got more or less the same marks. In the first example, we can see a very typical structure for ratio analysis. Normally, uh, uh, structuring ratio analysis is very easy uh, because um, there's five different uh, aspects of uh, uh, financial analysis. Each aspect of financial analysis is basically a part of your coursework. So you start with introduction, you have to have your objectives for that very clear and you have to describe your methodology um, uh, uh, of your work and then you move on to the main body of the work which is financial analysis uh, having five different parts or three different parts of ratios whichever aspects uh, your coursework asking you to cover. First example, you can see that we have um, um, the main body of the work which uh, starts with um, analysis part we have the profitability ratios, uh, starting with return on capital employed, definitions given, um, paraphrasing of the concept is given, um, and then uh, results have been um, um, highlighted. Uh, I have noticed that uh, uh, graphs are missing actually in this work, which is not good. Then you move on to return on equity, and then you do gross profit ratio, and then net profit ratio. So you're looking at each uh, ratio one by one in, in each area of the financial analysis. That's the structure. This is a very good way of making sure that you are including everything. So your, your, your uh, ratio analysis is comprehensive. The problem is it, with this is that uh, there will be a lot of repetition in this work and each ratio is going to have uh, 
uh, some areas which are important to highlight in your discussion and then some areas which may not be uh, uh, important to highlight in one segment of uh, your analysis for example profitability some ratios would be important to highlight and some ratios may be not important at all so for example when when we look at service industries uh, gross profit ratio is not important so if you do it that way uh, the chances are there will be some information which would not get you a lot of marks so maybe it would be a good idea to um, to use the second uh, type of structure which I am going to uh, show you now and in this we have a profitability ratio as one area we have not subdivided it into different ratios gross profit ratio net profit ratio but we actually looking at the profitability collectively this helps us to reduce our word count significantly and only highlight the areas which reader would need to know maybe there's a significant increase or decrease on that so, so you only include those points uh, which are are relevant to do this you, you do need a lot of practice basically that you pick up only the relevant areas from uh, your discussion which you have carried out in each ratio and then put them together to come come up with uh, a very comprehensive and um, a paragraph which flows nice as well so which has links with each thing so this uh, student has only talked about uh, the ratios which are, are important and uh, then uh, the points which are more relevant to uh, to the coursework so the whole uh, ratio has been um, summarized in, in in fewer words although I do believe that this is a bit too less uh, a, a bit more could have been written in this area so that's my um, negative on this if you look at efficiency ratios again there are four different at uh, four or five different efficiency ratios we talk about but uh, the two important one which was worth mentioning were were those so this is going to uh, reduce your word count uh, uh, massively executive summary is an important part of finalizing your work many students confuse executive summaries with um, with uh, with extracts or introduction and uh, however this is a completely different thing introduction is always written at the start of the work and um, abstracts although they are written uh, at the end they are very um, uh, different and mostly uh, students confuse them because uh, they are given at the start of the articles which are published in the in the journals however because financial analysis is more like a business report uh, it needs an executive summary which should be which would be given to your executives like directors or managers and it's, uh, it's, it's very different from um, uh, uh, the work which you produce for academic purposes. So the first example I can show you um, of, a, of an executive summary, uh, it gives a bit of introduction to the work and then it, it talks about the discussion. It gives a few uh, numbers, important numbers, and then it concludes. And then we can look at another example. Uh, again, it's a full page. So it is important that it's one page one full page it should not exceed a page it should not leave the page uh, blank uh, like um, uh, our third example this example uh, is not a good one although it does give us uh, um, it does give us some detail uh, but uh, it's not um, it's not uh, um, it's not a full page so um, it would pass it might even get um, uh, five marks because it does have some information uh, it hasn't used the full page which could have been used by adding few uh, uh, data presentation when you're finalizing your work make sure you add a nice cover page and give a contents page um, for your work as well you should learn how to create contents page from the Microsoft Word function it looks really bad if you have uh, typed your contents page you should give your page number you should have your student ID number make sure you have given your list of references you have given uh, all of your appendix uh, annual reports uh, for your main company and other notes all of this information is and all of your calculations um, um, should be given 
um, all the list of formulas should be given um, so it has the complete information which uh, the marker needs to mark your work. I hope you found this video helpful and uh, if you have any questions please post them in the comment section. If you like this video please give it a thumb up and share it with your friends and do subscribe to my channel where I will be uh, releasing more videos like this. Thank you for watching this video.